welcome. And I'll start with an apology because we had technical issues this morning. So the service wasn't actually recorded. So I've sort of cobbled together something. So I hope it's okay. But welcome. Welcome to this. And, and I hope, like I say, it's okay for you. We begin with our call to worship. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, or for you will lose your reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. Let's pray together. Gracious 
and generous God, who sees what's in our hearts, we give you thanks for your overflowing grace and mercy toward us. We thank you for the way you supply our needs, even sometimes before we realise we need them. And we thank you for both the large and little blessings of this life, the food we eat, the roof over our head, and for the fellowship we share. We thank you for our home, our family and our friends, and especially for all those watching this online. We thank you for our health, our work and our play. May we help those who are hungry, sick or lonely, those who are troubled in body or mind. And may we remember those who are suffering in wars and conflicts and and acts of aggravation and annoyance and, and stress and worry in this country and around the globe. Open our hearts to your love. Open our arms to embrace others and open our lives to live for you. We ask this through Christ, your son. Amen. We hear more from the reading from Matthew 6. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly in streets and on corners and in the synagogues, wherever everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need before you ask him. My dad had a little statue that he picked up at one of those seaside gift shops. And on the base, it had the phrase, when you're as great as I am, it's hard to be humble. We used to chuckle about it because my dad was one of the most unassuming, gentle, quiet, humble men you'd ever wish to meet. But when you think about it, it's true, isn't it? When we've done something good, created something, helped with something, organised something, we like someone to notice. We might not say that we do, but we do. We might not want to tick a tape parade or dancing elephants, but we like someone to acknowledge what we've created, helped or organised. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think so. I think if someone is given of their time, energy, skill or money to do something that makes someone's life just better, make the community better or something at your church run better. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying, well done? What's wrong with acknowledging their effort, giving them a hug or a thank you? I know that as Christians, we are supposed to serve God without any reward. But I think there's a huge difference between doing something simply in order to receive praise and then maybe sulking when we don't get it. And someone spontaneously saying thank you. And there's a huge difference in setting out to do something for personal praise rather than doing it for God. So what do we do? How do we differentiate between the two? Well, I believe the difference is motive. If I set out to do something because I want praise, if I do something because I want people to give me a slap on the back and, oh, well done. Well, then just as it says in the reading from Matthew, I will have already received my reward. But if I do something because I feel called by God to do it, or it's simply just the right thing to do, and someone decides to thank me, that's another story. Back in what I call the before times, when we had lockdown and all the misery that caused, I used to look forward to going outside every week and banging a saucepan together, along with my neighbours, in praise of the NHS, 
and all the other key workers giving of their time. It was one of the few times I set foot outside the house and actually saw people, actually saw my neighbours, particularly when I was on furlough from my from my other job. Now, I'm pretty sure that those wonderful people, along with all the other essential workers, appreciated the thought. But it slowly got hijacked by people wanting to show that they were one of us, that they were the people like us. Pictures started appearing in newspapers of politicians and celebrities out banging cookware and clapping. Somehow it, it lost its luster for me. It became more about point scoring than actually recognising the sacrifice, and it was a sacrifice, that some were making in order to keep the wheels of this country turning. And that's the difference between doing stuff for us and doing stuff for God. God isn't interested in us banging pans together. He doesn't care about our status or whether we have a Kim Kardashian lifestyle, whether we're pushing a political agenda. God sees what's in here, in our hearts. All God wants from us is to follow the teachings of Jesus, to be kind, to love each other, to give without reward, without the left hand knowing what the right hand's doing. Dennis Ruffley, who preached at Paisley Cross last week, used a wonderful verse from Micah. He has shown, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Brilliant words. And if while we're doing that, if in the process someone thanks us, acknowledges what we've done, appreciates our effort, then all well and good. But that should not be the driving force behind what we do in our churches, in our community, or in our own homes. I've always been one to say thank you, to let people know I appreciate what they do, because I think it's important to do so. And I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this, that there is someone, a friend, a neighbour, family member, maybe even a stranger, maybe it's an organisation that you are thankful for, for what they've done or given or the support you've received. So think of one maybe even two, and over the coming week, pray for them, thank God for them. And if you can, go up to them and say, thank you. Might be a bit embarrassing, but say it anyway. Let them know that they're appreciated. Now, I'd like to share with you a prayer that I learned way, way back when I was at primary school many months ago. And it's a prayer from Ignatius, St. Ignatius, yes, oh, crikey, St. Ignatius of Loyola. So it goes like this. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will. Amen. Let's listen to another song, maybe even join in.
God who gives and shares and loves, God who sent your son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge. Give us grace so to imitate him. May we seek to be humble, not as a way of soliciting praise, but as an expression of our faith, our love and our service. May we be ready to recognise our saviour in the lives and faith of others and be joyful and firm in our own faith. May we learn to be generous with our time, skills and compassion and be ready to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit. And we ask your blessing on the gifts that we can give, the gifts that we bring into the lives of others today. May they and we be used so that others know of your power and presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, as we go to do whatever you're doing later on today, may you remember to say thank you. It doesn't take much, it doesn't take much energy, but it can mean so much to somebody just to say, I've he heard you, I've seen you, I acknowledge you, and I thank you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Take care. Let's sing. <laughs>